welcome you to Talladega, Alabama, inside of the world's fastest, largest, and most competitive stock car facility, the Talladega Super Speedway. And inside of today's ARCA Poland Pro 500. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Punch, along with two-time NASCAR champion Ned Garrett, and welcome to Talladega Super Speedway. You know, the Toledo, Ohio-based ARCA organization, considered by many to be the most competitive of all racing series in the world. Look at last year, 15 different winners in 21 events. If you don't think that's competitive, take a look at our season opening telecast in February. Back, Daytona Beach, Florida, lap two of the ARCA 200 in turn three. Car number 75, Bob Shack, comes into contact with Tim Fita with Ford. Suddenly, 22 cars are sliding, scrambling, back in the wall, and many of the top competitors were eliminated. And Ned Jarrett, we could just as easily have one of those competitive shots today. Well, you get a false sense of security sometimes on these high banks at Daytona and Talladega, Jerry. You go out and practice and qualify on the track by yourself, and the car feels so secure. You say, hey, I can do anything I want to do. But then when you get out there with a lot of traffic, it's a different situation. The air affects these cars very dramatically, and that could have been what happened to Daytona. And the fact that they got very little practice in drafting here because of the weather, who knows what kind of action we're going to have today. And you got to remember, this is an entry-level series. Many of these drivers today have never been on a high bank asphalt oval. Their first time at speeds of over 180 miles per hour. So then today, let's take a look at our starting lineup. 20 rows, 40 strong. On the front row, the young man, Lloyd Allen Jr., 27 years of age from Raleigh, North Carolina, in the Hooters Ford. Alongside him, the man who won in Daytona Beach, Florida, Jeff Purvis from Clarksville, Tennessee. Back in row two, the pole center for the race at Pensacola. Second stop of the year for the Arca Stars, Tim Thiel. And there's Kirk Shelverding. What a race he had in Daytona, the former crew chief. Back to row three, the 1990 series champion, Bob Breback in the car number 34. It's a Ford here at Talladega. And Kenny Allen driving the car number three, starting in sixth position. Back to row four, Paige Jones. Yes, another Jones in racing. Pardelli Jones, youngest son, will start the car number 50 in seventh spot. And Mark Thompson, the fighter pilot, in car number 66, will start eighth position. Back to row five, Terry Teague, a young man from the NASCAR sportsman ranks, running awfully well here at Arca Competition. And the current point leader, a rookie, Jeremy Mayfield, in the Sadler Racing car number 95. Back to row six, Dale Fishline, the crew chief for Winston Cup driver Dave Marcus, and a pretty good short track racer himself. He will start inside row six. And there's a defending series champion, Bobby Bowsher, in the car number 21, starting in 12th spot. Back to row seven, Dale McDowell. Watch him come to the front in a hurry. Has a Richard Childress engine in that car. And Frank Kimmel, last year's Rookie of the Year, an impressive young driver, starts 14th. Back to row eight, Peter Gibbons from Ontario, Canada, fresh from the American-Canadian Tour, the Axe Series. He starts inside row eight. And Robert Hamm, in the car number 18, had a top 10 finish in Daytona. He will start in 16th position. Back to row nine, Larry Zent and Jeff McClure. Row 10, Wayne Peterson and the three-time series champion, Bob Dodder. Row 11 has Bill Venturini, a two-time champion. There's a 79, 89 champion, I should say, Bob Keselowski in car number 29. Then Craig Rubright and Andy Stone in row 12. Row 13 is Bob Strait and Tim Porter. Row 14 is 16-year-old driver, John Wilkinson and Greg Caver, a practicing attorney. Back to row 15, Robbie Coward alongside Rick Heiser and Rick Shepard in the Charlie Newby car starts alongside John Todd. Glenn Brewer starts inside row 17 alongside Bill Flowers. Joey Sontag from Little Elm, Texas, qualified inside row 18 along with Wayne Larson. Rows 19 and 20, Gary Toodle, Ron Burchett, Tim Davis, and Craig Spetman driving the car number 61. 40 strong starting here at Talladega. Let's check in the pits with Benny Parsons. Jerry, that big crash in Daytona in February, a couple of guys missed that crash. Number one, Jeff Purvis. He missed the crash because he started on the pole. Won the race. Loy Allen started second. He missed the crash. He finished second to Purvis. Here this afternoon, the reverse. Allen on the pole, Purvis on the outside. And it seems like every Saturday we talk about how these people are going to use this to get to Winston Cup Garage Race. There are three winners here this afternoon that have won the Arca Poland 500K. That's Mark Martin, Davey Allison, Jimmy Horton, all guys that are over in the Winston Cup Garage area through the Arca Division. But there's other people here that's trying to make it to Winston Cup. Or are they, John? Well, Benny, the guy who finished third in Daytona, Kirk Shelburne, he's not really sure where he wants to go with his racing career. Of course, for years, leading Dale Earnhardt, Richard Schiller 
Goodrich Chevrolet team, the Winston Cup championship. Kirk retired last fall, decided he'd give driving a little try. He says it's more of something to pass the time while he grows with his family. He has a two-year-old son at home. One interesting note, Jerry, I want to make about Kirk Shelbertine, who qualified fourth today. Among the top six drivers, five of the cars have big-name engine builders, guys like Robert Yates, Ernie Elliott, Rump Pittman. But Kirk's engine built by Steve Roberts, and he makes his living building mostly late-model stock car engines for Saturday night races. And there's the car number 98 that Kirk Shelburne will be driving, the same car that he drove in Daytona from 37th starting spot, and he drove through that first lap crash, second lap crash, ended up getting an impressive third-place finish hit, and he's running an Oldsmobile. And our air shot, courtesy of the Family Channel Blend, making its worldwide tour. You'll be seeing it at many different uh, events throughout the year. And our in-car camera, the X1R in-car. You're riding along with outside front row starter Jeff Perman. See if we can get a good look at that Pontiac safety car up front with Elmo Langley for the Delco Remy X1R sponsored car. Of course, Jeff Perman, the winner in Daytona. X1R, the pure synthetic metal conditioner. Blend of synthetic lubricants that many of the teams in Winston Cup and Archer Racing use. Their headquarters, Foreman Beach, Florida. Nice little wave there from Jeff Purvis, the Clarkville, Tennessee native. He qualified 18th for the Winston 500 here at the Talladega Super Speedway. So, at least in his qualifying, he has done well. A couple of drivers to keep your eyes on back in the pack. Bill Venturini has borrowed an engine from the Morgan McClure team, the Ernie Irvin team. He had trouble in qualifying. Has a very stout engine in the car number 25. He'll be coming in a hurry. As will the driver starting beside him back in row 11. Bob Keselowski, who had a problem in qualifying, and now has a brand new Joey Erickson engine in his Chrysler. Getting set for green flag racing at Talladega Super Speedway. Glad to have you in for the beautiful afternoon for stock car racing. Green flag being waved. Scrambles toward turn one. Kirk Selmadine off to a little bit of a slow start there. The three cars has broken away. Jeff McClure is really showing some smoke, Ned. The car number 89 showing a plume of smoke from that pit passer sponsored machine. Looks like it could either be an oil line or a filter. Benny, any thoughts on that? Well, Ned, they had to put replace a cylinder head gasket just prior to the race, and evidently they've left the line loose someplace because they were really scrambling trying to get that car ready. Sometimes when you have to rush to get things done, things can get left undone. Field coming at you at almost 196 miles an hour. The average speed for a lap, 191, and Roy Allen has the Hooters sponsored Ford Thunderbird of the field. Tim Steele was in second place, and Jeff Purvis third. Those three cars have pulled away from the fourth place car. Darrell Ford to the Chevrolet. And now, let's take a look inside Jeff Purvis's Chevrolet as he looks to the inside. And if not the quick way, he will fall back in the draft. And that fourth place car is Bob Freeback. As we watch those three cars looking out the windshield of Jeff Furman. Well, that engine just purring so nice and smooth right now. I hope they do that all day. That's the same car Purvis used at Daytona Beach, Florida when he sat on the pole and won the season opening Arctic 200. It's a Chevrolet Lumina that they purchased from the Morgan McClure team. It was a 1991 Daytona 500 winning car with Ernie Irvin aboard. It's the same engine and car they won with in Daytona. Right now they're holding on to a solid third place in that tight lead draft. I'm sure that they can look up in their rear view mirror, Jerry, and see that they're pulling away from the pack of cars that are fourth and on back. And uh, it would pay them to stay in line for a little while so they can pull away further. Just uh, lessen the chances of anything happening the lesser number of cars you have running in a group. So they like that being just three of them up front there. Riding along with the X1R in-car camera third-place driver, Jeff Purvis out of Clarksville, Tennessee. We're in the early laps here at the Poland Pro 500 at Talladega Super Speedway. 500 kilometers, 312 miles, 117 laps. Our speedball coverage is being brought to you by Clayton State. The Big 
cube. It's one soft motor oil. My ally signals Pram filters. You can pay a little now or a lot later. And by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush life. We'll be back with more green flag racing. Arctic style from Talladega Super Speedway after this. Stay with me. In turn three, back at Talladega Super Speedway, Tim Steele has the high side net. Can he make it stick? Well, that's a long way around, Jerry, but he had a good run, and uh, yes, he does make it stick. He takes over the lead. So Tim Steele, out of Coopersville, Michigan, 24 years of age, puts his fourth Thunderbird in front, and he will be credited for leading this lap as they head for turn one. Let's check in with John Turner. Jerry, what you saw right there, a Robert Yates engine passing, another Robert Yates engine as Tim Steele took the lead. Now, some of his crew members boasted this morning, hey, we're going to take the lead on the first lap and lead it all the way and win this race and give Tim his very first race in Arca. I said, hey, Tim, how about that? All he did was smile and shake his head. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you know, last time out, this young man was very impressive at Texas World Speedway, College Station, Texas. He finished third out there, but guess who he finished behind? Darrell Walters won the race, and Kenny Schrader finished second. A nice shot from high above Talladega Super Speedway, courtesy of the Family Channel Blimp. And we'll take you on the lap from this vantage point, way above the racetrack. Jerry, we see those three cars that broke, have broken away. There's another pack of three cars that have been dead behind them. Uh, Kurt Selberdine, and they appear to be gaining on this race. And in fact, it looks like the first Four sets of cars are all in groups of three. Don't think it's planned that way. It just sort of work out that way. Nice spacing here in the early laps as you're getting a nice glimpse from the way above in the family channel flip being called today by chief pilot Alan Burroughs. Family channel flip on its fifth month of its 1993 accentuate the positive airship tour. Cross country journey. We've had these wonderful shots from a number of our Winston Cup events on our ESPN Speed World coverage. Now you're getting a shot at Jeff Purvis is getting to move in a little bit on Roy Allen. And Tim Steele has pulled away a little bit. And they're already beginning to lap some of the slower cars to pace their city. They have a big pack of cars up in front of them that just went around the car 04 of Wayne Larson. And there you can see that pack of cars that are coming up on you. There's the first pack to stay going by those three cars. And then back fourth, fifth, and sixth. Kurt Shelberty in the car number 98. Car number 50 there, that's Paige Jones. And the leader's now working their way on the high side. 33 degree banking here in the turn. It's banked 18 degrees in the front stretch. And here's that other pack coming through the lap cars. And that black car in the back there in that person is Jimmy Allen in the car number three. Shelby, North Carolina. The only set sponsored in that car. They are gradually gaining on the front people. Kenny Allen in the car number three has, has a spotter today, Dick Trickle, who drove Kenny Allen's Winston Cup car for four or five events back a few years ago. And Trickle helped him set his car up in Arca competition. And you see, as you said, there, those three cars there, fourth, fifth, and sixth, are beginning to reel in the leaders and cut the margin in half. Well, they're doing a good job of staying in line, drafting, running a little bit closer together, actually, than the leaders are. We have a couple of cars out of the race area already. Jeff McClure, who we saw smoking on the very first lap, he's out of the race, and Greg Haber has taken his car to the garage as well. this far over 190, almost 191 miles per hour. Pretty good pace being set by the youngster, Tim Steele. He's in the red car, left of your street. Working through some more traffic. Boy, traffic doesn't give him any problem. He just drives on by. Leaving their way through traffic. Just 24 years of age, Tim Steele. John Turner mentioned earlier that's a Robert Yates engine in his Ford Thunderbird. He was involved in that massive crash at the beginning of the show in Daytona, but had a great finish at Texas World Speedway. Finished third. Hey, look at this. The last lap speed, 196.14 miles an hour. And no wonder the pole sitter at front row starters are having a hard time saying, well, that young man, he is setting a blister. 
electric thing. Yes, he is. That's five miles over five miles an hour faster than the cold speed of Roy Allen Jr. Here comes Kurt Shelburne and Paige Jones. Kenny Allen, those three, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now here's seventh, eighth, and ninth. Terry Teague in the car number 11. Then comes the car number 34, the 1990 series champion, Bob Breedback. That's a Ford with an Ernie Elegant engine aboard. And behind him, the car number 95, the rookie driver who is also our point leader, Jeremy Mayfield. So that is the, the uh, second threesome, a uh, third threesome on the track. Back up front, Bramble once again is there shuffling in toward the Bourbon, showing a little bit of a puff of smoke a minute ago. Doesn't appear to be off the pace any. No, he's still up to speed, certainly. We'll keep a close eye on him. And see, his purpose, of course, is the number one. White car with the red top, following Roy Allen Jr. In the Hooters Ford number seven. That's number two. from that car number one. Well, here we go. Uh-oh. Steele goes to the inside. It was a mistake. He had to back off. And Loy Allen goes back into the lead. Steele might lose their draft. He has a fast car. He might be able to pick them back up. But he made that move to the inside and had to back off from the lap car. They just motored by on the outside. A little bit of an experience showing on the youngsters' part, Tim Steele. Just 24 years of age from Coopersville, Michigan. That cost him a lead. Could have cost him a race car, but he managed to back off and keep the car under him as he went back around some of the slower traffic. But it cost him about uh, two seconds in distance here on the speedway. Well, it was, uh, I would say, a rookie mistake, Jerry, but he, he made a professional decision once he got down there to back off and, as you say, keep from ramming into someone and perhaps wrecking the race car. So he was very smart and very cool in that respect. He's a very impressive young man. I watched him drive that race in Texas, and uh, he was very, very impressive, and certainly in qualifying and practice run through this week, he has been impressive. And picking up where he left off at the end of the 1992 season right here on ESPN, driving the car number two, the Hooters sponsorship is Wally Allen Jr. He won the season finale in Atlanta, his first and only Arca Series victory. One car going very slowly down the back stretch as we saw the leaders go past them. And that is the car 05 of Gary Toodle from Savannah, Georgia. That car, I don't know, it looks like it's coasting Gary. I don't know if he can get back to the pits or not. Jeff Purvis, Jerry Ballou, crew chief on the car. Gary, they reported some smoke. Has Jeff said anything? Yeah, Jeff said everything looks real good on the temperature gauges and oil temp, the water temp. We went just a tad softer with a rear springs. It could just be bumping a fender well a tad, bumping a top side in the wheel well cup. But I believe everything's okay because all the gauges look real good on the car right now. Okay, time looks real good, so we're not real concerned with it. We're just concerned about the weather at the moment. Okay, they're concerned that it might be a tire rub, guys. Here he comes. He's trying to take the lead. As they split the car number eight of Bob Donner, the three-time series champion. Donner looked out to the right side and saw a Ford come by. Looked to the left window and saw a Chevrolet come by. But they stay one, two. With Roy Allen Jr., the leader. Jeff Purvis is second. And yeah, I like to save money as much as the next guy. But what are the odds that there's going to be a sale on the part you need when your car breaks down? Faith, it's not going to happen. That's why I go to AutoZone. I mean, sure, you can wait around for a couple weeks and maybe beat their price by a few pennies someplace else. But I don't want to wait for a sale when I need a part. Now, what more could you ask for? We're here at McDonald's to tell you about... Breakfast, breakfast economics. economics. The great breakfast is a great price. It's a McDonald's thing. It saves you money. Pretty simple, isn't it? Piece of cake. What you want is what you get. And that car, he has been on pit road. Let's check in with Benny Parsons. Well, Jerry, they had convinced themselves that the rear tires were rubbing the quarter panel, right? Well, 80 miles per hour, the rear tires are not rubbing the quarter panel. They're still smoking. Now they determine that the valve cover gasket is leaking on the car. They have another valve cover. If they get a car just like they want to change it, but right now they just can't take a chance. But is Arca going to black flag them? We'll just have to wait and see. 
Okay, Benny, thanks a lot. Uh, that's our Daytona winner. It's one R, Delco Remy Chevrolet for Jeff Purvis, and he is still yeah. showing quite a bit of smoke in the back of that car. Yeah, it looks like you can see some smoke as he's riding along, getting, getting ready to get the green flag here once again. You see his car on the outside line there. About a 12 to 13 car back. Well, he's back. He's back in the pack, pardon me, Jerry. But, uh, you know, he filled up with gas while he was in there, and we run 25 laps now as they come around to get the green flag. So others are going to have to stop here before too long. If that smoke doesn't bother him too much, he might, uh, might work to his advantage. Lap 26, back to the green flag, and as Jeff Purvis jumps in the throttle, the smoke pours around the car a minute ago, and you can see some smoke even inside. Now it's going to clear out a little bit as he heads up to the banking. 33-degree bank. Now he shifted into fourth gear. Takes a long time to get these cars up to speed where he can shift into that fourth gear on the track where they run the restrictor place. And Jerry, we have a report that they're going to black flag Jerry for Jeff Purvis the next time around because of the smoke. That's Kerry Keith Tanawa Insurance sponsored machine in front and Purvis still smoke puffing from beneath that car. Doesn't hurt the running of it though. You heard Benny Parsons say a minute ago they want to bring him down and change the valve cover. And here's a battle for the lead as Tim Steele in the car number 16 makes it look easy on the inside. Pulls back up in front here in the tri-oval area. And he will lead that lap in front of Roy Allen Jr. He has a very fast race car. Remember back early in the race when he made that little mistake on some lap cars and he dropped pretty far back? Didn't take him about three or four laps, so he had caught the leaders back again before the caution came out. There's Tim Steel, our leader. Behind him is Roy Allen. Speaking of fast race cars, one young man is running in third spot. Pretty good effort for Paige Jones. That's the black car to the right of your screen. 20 year old driver. Of course, the youngest son of Parnelli Jones in the slick 54 Thunderbird, prepared by Bobby Jones. Jeff Jones is there in that operation. Bobby Jones out of Houston, Texas. This is the car that A.J. Ford tried to qualify the Daytona 500 this year. Was running pretty well in the qualifying race, and the rear end came out of it and did not make the starting lineup. Here's Purvis, Jerry, still coming up through the pack, still some smoke coming from it. Uh, don't think they've given it the black flag yet. They're watching it to see if it's a hazard to anyone else on the racetrack. Looks to be clearing up a little bit. Well, when he goes into turn one, it seems to, to be a little worse going into that point is when maybe the oil dumps over into that valve cover there and you know, a little bit leaks on the exhaust. That certainly doesn't hurt the running part of it. He's coming back towards the front. He slides beneath the car number 66 to take the seventh spot away. And we are told that they will flagging the car number one as he heads for the trioval area. As yet, no black flag being seen from Doyle Ford and Jim Clark. Family Channel Blimp showing you a shot above the car number one, and now we're told they possibly will bring him down pit road very soon. Let's check in the pits of Finney Parsons. Finney. Jerry, they haven't given the black flag from the start finish line, but the ARCA officials standing here in the pits keep telling Jerry Ballou and the crew, bring him down pit road. He told them twice. This time they are going to bring him down, but that's the benefit of a black flag. Okay, he is slowing down now as he comes to the off of turn four. Boy, that's a tough break, because that car was running so fast. The car owned by James Finch out of Panama City, Florida. That's where the car is maintained by Gary Ballou and the crew. Jerry, I said he was slowing down. He wasn't. It's just the way that he was entering that turn four, and he's still out there running strong. And that time they did wave the black flag at him. I guess he would love to have a caution flag come out, but now he has been black flagged, and uh, next time by, he'll be making his way down fifth row. So he has already moved back up to seventh place from back in the field. So no doubt for what he has a very fast race car. That's the Winston Cup crew, and there's the car number one, the James Finch car coming. They have a Winston Cup car, as you mentioned, it's qualified for the Winston 500, which you'll be able to see later today on ESPN. And there's the car number one slowing down. And also a reading X1R. So there's the Winston Cup crew. Yeah, it's also the Arca crew. All in one. All in one. Yes. Multi-talented. Road as they can go. In fact, it's the very last, or next to the last pit. Got to be mind 
vehicle with a speed on pit road is 70 miles per hour. So you wonder why he didn't come flying down pit road. And Benny Parsons is there. Benny? Yeah, he turned the engine off. They're taking the valve cover bolts off. There's four bolts holding the valve cover on. There's also an oil line that attaches to the valve cover. You've got to take that loose. Got a couple of guys from the Morgan McClure team that work on the engine cup on Ernie Irvin's Winston Cup car, so they know exactly what wrenches they need and everything else. So they're changing the way, guys. Had a change in a couple of laps. Right now he has gone one lap down. Good five-car battle up front for the lead. Ken Field still showing the way. Behind him is Lowy Allen, the pole sitter. Behind Allen is a 20-year-old driver. He's still going to go back, and that is Paige Jones. And the Bobby Jones prepared for it, and behind him is Kurt Shelverdine. Former crew chief for Dale Earnhardt for 12 years and four Winston Cup championships. Car number 98 is Shelverdine. Shelmer D, pardon me. I promised him I would do it half one way and half the other, but I'm sure I was right. Whatever. Kurt's in the car number 98. He is currently in fourth position. That fifth place car we just barely saw the nose on. He's going to 34 of Bob Greenback. Back a little bit right now, but still trying to hang on to the lead draft. is sponsored by Advantage Memory Corporation. You told me what that was, but I forgot. <laughs> it's a, actually no, it's a software memory enhancement system, and that's the sponsor that was on that car in Daytona when he started back in 37th spot, and again rides with him today. Here he's running fourth at Talladega. Super Speedway, high above the racetrack, getting some of those panoramic shots of Central Alabama, the Family Channel Blimp, being powered today by Chief Pilot Alan Burrow. We'll be back with more ARCA stock car racing after this. Back at Talladega Super Speedway, our leader, Tim Steele, dropping off the pace and should be headed for pit road for what would be possibly his only pit stop. Lap 44 here at Talladega. Here comes the youngster, 24 years of age, from Coopersville, Michigan, the HSI in Engineering Ford. As he makes his way down pit road, let's go to John Kearney. Jerry, we talked to several of these teams. They said they could go 50 into the mid-50s, but Tim Steele and his crew have decided to pit here about lap 45 as I look on the board. They will go to work on the right side. First can of gasoline already in. Tim sitting patiently in the car. Throws out the cool drink. They'll clean off just a little bit of debris from the front wheel. A two tires change cool for Tim Steele. He almost stalls the car out as he leaves pit road. Let's go further down pit road. Benny Pike. John, there's some dealing going on down here. David Smith, the acting crew chief of Kurt Shelby, and went down to Bobby Jones, the crew chief of Dave Jones, and said, look, we need to pit together. We don't need to get separated. So they're all scrambling to come in. Everyone is coming in right now. The three leaders are coming in together so they can go back out together. Well, the car number two is not coming in, Lloyd Allen Jr., but Paige Jones and Kurt Shelby are right in front of there, Benny. Joe's bringing the car to stock gas only on both these cars. Fuel only, no tires. They're looking at the tires, everything looks okay. They're cleaning the windshield. What kind of fuel is in Kirk's car? And the photograph crew, Jeff Lodon, is maybe to be Joe. And look at him smoking that right rear tire as he tries to leave you. Wow. Kirk Shepard, tries to take his car out of the pit a little slower. He's burning that rubber. Man, we're in a smoking rubber down here. <laughs> but Benny, they really got separated from uh, Shelburne. He takes much longer than Paige Jones in the pit, so, so he's not going yeah. to be in the draft. That's where they're going to hurt him. And here comes the car number two, the Hooters sponsored board of Roy Allen Jr., who was our leader and our pole sitter. And he brings the car down to the attention of Mark Hooter and the rest of the Hooters crew. Benny Parsons is there. And they are changing the right side on his car. The other two cars only fuel. Changing the right side on the Roy Allen automobile. Cleaning the windshield. Trying to put fuel in the car. They're having trouble. They're having trouble getting the fuel in. They had to wait. The gas, the jackman waited, waited to get, and finally full of fuel. They let it down, and away he goes. And I'm 
know that the 16 car has been black flag for going too fast on pit road. That's a concern for these young drivers here. It is been either speed to 70 miles per hour and Tim Steele has had to come back in for a quick stop and go. He has been on pit road. There's the car number 16, the youngster, former ASA rookie of the year. Car owned by his dad, Harold Steele. That's what HS Die stands for, Harold Steele Die on the side of that car. Had an impressive third in Texas last month. Road was another mistake to cost it's, it's so easy to make that mistake. You really have to concentrate very, very hard to not to go over that speed. Here was the meter. Oh, he came in. Mark Thompson came in too hot. Cleared the wheel. And Benny Parsons hit one of his guys, the jack man, but he's right back to work. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Not the jack man down, not the jack out of his hand. The guy jumped up, grabbed the jack, and went back to change the time and get the car jacked up. That's unbelievable. Evidently, it didn't hurt him too badly. We'll go down and get a word with him when this is over with, but they're waiting to get things full of fuel. It is full. The jack is down. Go, Mark. Go, they're saying. He finally beat Mark obviously upset over that mistake in the pit. Mark Thompson, a 41-year-old driver from Cartersville, Georgia. Now, Mike Brand is the crew chief on that car who spent nine years with Bill Elliott and the Harry Melling team. He has been the crew chief on that car since December. Just minutes ago, Mark Thompson, take a look, as he brought his Ford Thunderbird down pit road and gets on the brakes, and there's this Jackman who just gets clipped. Fortunately, the Jackman had plus the mind to get off his feet. And the Jackster, much longer, is able to get off his feet and take the door some of the impact. He never broke stride when it went, he came yeah, up on his, his, on his hands and feet and went right over to that jack, got him fitted under the car, and jacked her right back up. Let's check with Benny Parsons. Benny, be okay? Sure, sure, let's find out. Ted, Victoria, that was quite a deal. Yeah, it's fun bouncing off the cars. You okay? <laughs> yeah, fine. You just scrambled back up and went right to work, huh? It's fine. Good thing he won the 90-pound jack, huh? <laughs> yeah, you got that right. He's okay. He's smiling about it anyway, guys. Wow. He waits he sees the footage of that incident. He won't be smiling for long when he realizes how close he came to being seriously injured on a miscue in the pit. Here's the car number three on the speedway. That's Ken Allen in the onset sponsored Chevrolet. He'd had a little bit of a problem problem on a restart earlier in the race, Jerry. Had a transmission problem. Perhaps got it locked up in a gear, but he's, uh, he's back up front there now. He should be able to go a while because he did come into this, I think, on one of the caution flags. Ken Allen, 37 years of age, owns Allen Associated Glass in Shelby, North Carolina. He is our leader as we approach the halfway point at Talladega. Back in a moment. That white car, Kirk Shelmerdine, is being shown as the leader. He is back in the pack a little bit. The car number 16 of Tim Steele is up ahead of him, but there's the one car. He's a couple of laps down because of changing a bow cover a little bit on it. That's Jeff Purvis. Riding inside Jeff Purvis, the X1R Chevrolet. He is behind Jeremy Mayfield, the car number 95, which is our current point leader. by the leaders, and he stayed out there. He got one of those laps back. Jeff Purvis trying to go up on the high side, coming off a 33-degree banking here in Talladega. That is Kirk Shelmerdine behind him in the Oldsmobile car number 98. That's the white red Uber car. It's wide to the inside. Trying to go by one of the slower cars, car number 33, that's trying to pass. That is Dale McDowell out of Chickamauga, Georgia. And certainly Shelmerdine wants to hang on to that one car if he can, because he knows it's a very fast race car. He also knows he's a couple of laps down, and so that maybe he can pull away from those behind him. Looking out the rear window there, the X1R in-car camera. There's Kurt Shelmerdine just behind that car number one. It's showing a couple laps down. Shelmerdine is the leader. They're showing... Reback, the 1990 series champion in second position. Our field side.
Montgomery, showing you where some of your favorite drivers are running after they've had problems in the early going. You can see some of the cars out. And if you just joined us, we might mention again that the Jeff Purvis car, which we are looking at the in-car camera of right now, had a problem smoking early on when black flagged by the ARCA officials came down pit road and changed the valve cover. He lost some laps in the pit. With four laps in, he lost three laps. And uh, according to the scoring, it is now shown two laps down to the leader. The 61 car of Craig Fetton counts the bluff Iowa. It looks like it's had a problem. He's running down the inside track now. Shelberty's car being owned by Kerry and Ken Affleck out of Forest City, North Carolina, a father and son team. And if one car spins, that is Bob Donner, the three-time Arca champion, as they scramble away from the wall, and he slams the inside barrier. And boy, this will be a race back to the line for several drivers who are trying to get laps back, and Tim Steele is one of those. He's right out in front of the leaders. He wants to get back so he can get back in the thick of this, and he does indeed. And so does Jeff Purvis get a lap back, and the car number 66 of Mark Thompson as well, as we see Daughter's car spinning around in the grass out there. So several drivers beat the leader back to the start finish line, so that's going to help them. Lap 64, fourth caution flag of the day for the spin. 54-year-old veteran driver, Bob Daughter. Here's another look at it. Here he was very low on the racetrack as we picked him up. He was already in the spin. And once he gets on the grass, he doesn't have a lot of control. He has the car locked down there right now, and it spins backwards into that inside retaining wall. But he fires the car and has, has since got it into the pit. John Kernan? Ned, what Bob told the crew, he said the tire, tire just blew. The car went around on him. He has pulled it back into the pit area. They put tires on it. They've also gone ahead and pulled some of the sheet metal away from the tires. Now Bob Dodder is just sitting down on pit road talking to uh, his crew out of the window. And Bob Dodder's Chevrolet Lumina has been uh, shortened somewhat there. The car prepared by his son, Bobby Dodder. Now the car did not get airborne here because aerodynamics are extremely important to super speedway racing. That car has been shortened somewhat, and the sheet metal not exactly as slick as you would like it. But aerodynamics, the subject of our track pack. Track packs are brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. How could anyone forget Davy Allison at Pocono last year, coming off the tunnel corner, get in the grass and flip in violently? like 11 times in four seconds. He got in the grass and the car flipped over the wrong way. It went backwards. A lot of people contend that air gets inside the race car through the window and under the car. That's why NASCAR and ARCA have mandated that all these race cars on larger racetracks have to use a plexiglass window in the right side to keep air out. Also on the bottom of the car, a skirt that runs the entire length of the right side to keep as much air as possible from getting under this race car and turning it over backwards. And that's exactly why Bob Dodder's car was able to slide at about 180 miles an hour sideways, backwards and sideways again without coming off the ground. He has some sheet metal damage and a broken steering linkage, we are told, where he has the damage in the front of the car. They will try to get that car repaired and get him back out to gather some points towards yet another ARCA championship. Back with more from Talladega after this. The Talladega Super Speedway cautioned on the field for the fourth time today behind the Pontiac safety car. Let's check into the pits with Benny Parsons. Benny. Jerry, I'm down with Bobby Jones, crew chief on Page Jones car. Bobby, they had your lap down. Now they're giving you the lap back. I'm sorry, King. They're trying to be... He's trying to talk to his driver. He's trying to talk to the ARC official. So to get behind the 66, right? You had, they had your lap down. Now they say you're back in the lead lap. We're back in the lead lap. That's all I know. You're a little hot there for a while. Oh, well, a little bit. 652 be down. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> oh, man. Benny, I don't blame you for being concerned because uh, according to our calculations here in the tower, he was never a lap down. I don't know how he got uh, fouled up. He wasn't scoring a move, but evidently the guy squared away. Now. He exited pit road actually in front of Kirk Shelverdine, and Shelverdine's being shown as a leader. So there is Shelverdine, our leader, and our auto's on recap. has led 10 of 66 laps, five leaders, seven lead changes, four cautions, 15 laps, and the average speed 144.622 miles per hour. Lap leaders taking a look there at the list of leaders. Kirk Shelverdine's our current leader. And out of race. You can see five cars there, including Joey Sontag, Little Elm, Texas, in the car number 73, who's gone to the garage area. Doyle Ford on the flag stand along with Jim Clark as they wave the green flag once again. That's the halfway point here, lap 69 of 117 left, which make up the Poland Pro 500. Jerry, we're showing nine cars in the lead lap. Of course, Sheldon Berdine is the leader. In second place is Bob Breback. Third is Loy Allen Jr. Fourth is the car number three of Kenny Allen. And in fifth place is Bobby Bowser. And in sixth place, the car number 50 now of Paige Jones. The car number 16 of Tim Steele is seventh. In eighth place is Mark Thompson. And in ninth place, car number 29 of Bob Kelsey And Roy Allen has gone by Bob Breeback for second position. Roy Allen is the car number two. Breeback is the car number 34. He is third. They are running inside of Jeremy Mayfield. As they try to reel in our leader, Kirk Shelverdine. Now two car lakes. They get a car lake now as Shelverdine tries to hold off the challenge of Roy Allen Jr. heading into turn one. Bob Breeback running back in third spot. A good run for Bob Breeback with more. Here's John Kernan. Jerry, don't know how much of a problem it's going to cause, but Bob just radioed in uh, right before they went back to green. He said one of the bolts that holds the hood on right in front of him on the left side of the car has worked it. Ooh, way and out. here's trouble. They paid Jones on the slick 50 and spun down to the inside and hit the inside retaining wall pretty hard. Boy, he was on the move, unfortunately. wall there right now. Well, he had a very fast race car and had been placed back on the lead lap. Here they are scrambling toward the caution flag once again. And Kurt Shelverdine backs off. Here comes Loyola, but Shelverdine will hold the lead by about a car length. As the caution being waved for the fifth time today due to a spin off of turn two and down the back straight away by the youngster Paige Jones out of Torrance, California. 20 years of age in the Slick 50 Ford. His car has come to rest against the banking there. Let's take a look once again, right side of your screen, black car number 50. It looks like he and the car number three, I don't know if they touched or not, but look, the car almost gets up on the side. The other cars go by. Those plastic windows keep it down. And that aerodynamic package that Benny Parsons was showing you there a moment ago, he spins down on the grass and then slams inside into the inside retaining wall. I look to the right of your screen. The photographer is absolutely fearless. He hasn't budged. And you'll see him coming into your screen. He's sitting there getting a good camera shot, coming right at him, and he hasn't moved yet. Well, he knew that there was pretty good bank down there that that car was not going to hit. But most of the time, you see something coming at you at that speed. You're too you afraid to run. <laughs> yeah, or you're too afraid to run one. Here's a look at it from a different angle. Page uh, taking a wild ride at about 185 miles per hour across. You see that big wall? Safety is always first in NASCAR here at Talladega. They have that big retaining wall, that dirt bank there with the safety crews right there adjacent to that, and now Page has been able to drive the car back to pit road. We are under caution here at Talladega Super Speedway for the fifth time today. Our leader, Kirk Shelmerdine. We have a lot of good mechanics that shop at AutoZone. We also have a lot of people who just want to save some money by doing a simple job themselves, like changing their oil or putting in new plugs. They just want to come in, get what they need, and get out. Well, at AutoZone, we have parts for just about every car made. So if you know what you want, great. But if you're not quite sure about something, no problem. We'll help. After all, that's what we're here for. Burt Reynolds talks with the Quaker State team. Kodak, I got to get my name on the car or my fans are getting restless. No rules. How about on the big Q? The big Q stands alone. Stands for quality. You can't get better protection. No other oil beats Quaker State. How about right here? 
No way. Fred doesn't like to be crowded. The fans are getting demanding. All right. We'll go get the painter. <laughs> so much had a hard time finding the painter. Nothing beats Quaker State. It's one tough motor oil. Son of a gun protectant. Nothing works better on your car's leather, vinyl, and rubber. It can turn just about anything into a great-looking car. Nice car. What, this pile of junk? Give it the gun with Son of a Gun. And now give your tires a quick kick with One Step Tire Care. Speed Week, the month of May. For your most comprehensive coverage of activities at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, plus the latest news in the world of racing, Speed Week, the motorsports coverage you deserve. Saturday nights at 10.30 Eastern. Back at the Poland Pro 500, heavy traffic in the back stretch for Loy Allen Jr. The car number one to the right side of him is two laps down, flying to get a lap back. But the concern is the red car. On the right side, car number 16, Ken Steele, as he tries to get around, and they are reporting some raindrops around the racetrack, Ken. And they're racing hard to knowing that if the rain gets any heavier, that it could be the end of the race. But they don't have to be nearly as concerned about the one car. Boy, Allen doesn't. He does about the 16 of Tim Steele, and Steele's going to take the lead. Tim Steele will take the lead that time by. Rides the draft. Boy, Allen trying to hold the groove on the bottom of the racetrack. Now you're watching the battle for the lead out the rear window of Jeff Purvis' car, now being shown as one lap down. There's the battle. Ford on the inside, car number two. And on the outside, car number 16, also the HS Diet Engineering Ford of Tim Steele. This is the battle for the lead. Benny Parsons reported if we don't have rain and this thing goes green the rest of the way, both of them are more than likely going to have to make pit stops. But they're racing hard right now, wondering if those raindrops they feel on their windshield or see on their windshield is going to make any difference. And look at them flipping the car as they come through the tri-oval here. And Tim Steele trying to hold off Lloyd Allen there door to door. Quite a battle up there. Up to the John Curtis. Jerry Grady Humphreys, the crew chief for Tim Steele, has told him it's starting to rain. He better stand on it and try and get around. So he tucked in behind Jeff Purvis. And just moments ago, Grady told him, hey, stay behind that one car. Get behind him and try to hook up with him and draft away from the two cars. Well, it didn't quite work, John, because the two car now has gotten back down in front. And he's trying to pick up the draft of the one car of Jeff Purvis. Tim Steele trying to improve on his best arc of finish of third just a few weeks ago at Texas World Speedway down in College Station. And a, a great run he had there, finishing third behind two Winston Cup veterans, Darrell Waltrip and Ken Schrader. You saw that race right here on ESPN, the Western Auto Shootout down there. Today it's the Poland Pro 500. Roy Allen trying to use the draft now off the car number one, the Jeff Purvis machine. And if you just joined us, Purvis had a problem was smoking, smoke coming from the car, came down pit road, changed the valve cover, lost three laps to pit. He has since made up two and is now being shown one lap down in the 14th position. Well, he would love to see a caution come out right now and no rain and then uh, get a chance again to move up a little further. He is currently being shown in the 14th position, Jeff Purvis. And they are watching patiently there in the pits as they watch the cars go by. That is the crew. Mark Hooter and company of Roy Allen Jr. That Hooter sponsored Ford Thunderbird. Young man out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Began his career in go-karts racing. Now, Jerry, this second pack, which is being led by Kirk Shelmerdine, has fallen pretty far behind that front threesome that we've been watching. Now they're closing in. They have, have formed together in a three-car draft. That's... Uh, the car in, in the middle there, the car number 95, is here in Mayfield. He's a lap down, but he's certainly effectively working with Shelmerdine and the Ken Allen car to help them move up towards the front. The 98 car, Shelmerdine, is the third place car. The, the car of the car behind it, 95, Jeremy Mayfield, he is ninth a lap down. As you said, Ken Allen in the car number three, he is in fourth position. He's going around the double zero machine of Robbie Coward out of Savannah, Georgia. Bob Breback is in the fifth position. He's not in the picture of this group. 
But there are the leaders. You see, they're not that far ahead of this country. Well, as you pointed out, Matt, Kurt Kelmerdine leading in draft, and they're beginning to run this threesome down. And they're close enough now that they can, can get benefit from the draft of those three cars up in front of them. Laps are winding down. 86 laps still in the 87 this time by. Just 30 laps remaining here in the Poland Pro 500. Roy Allen Jr. trying to hold on and get his second career arc of victory. Back with more from Talladega after this. Stay with me. It's a vicious psycho. On May 24th, 1992, the top three finishers of the Indianapolis 500, including the winner, Al Unser Jr., all used one particular brand of motor oil. Was it coincidence? No. It was Valvoline. People who know, use Valvoline. And now the only thing going faster than an Indy car is a case of quality Valvoline motor oil. Because when you buy a case, you'll save $2.40. It's the Valvoline Indy Winter Sale. How far will your money go when buying a dual sport 350S? Introducing Suzuki's Get On It flexible financing. Want to see it again? Other programs include zero down, more monthly payments, and first time buyer. Get on it. Back at Talladega Super Speedway, the Poland Pro 500. You're riding aboard with Jeff Purvis, the X1R. Don't go Randy Chevrolet. But he's pulling them a pretty good race, but Kirk Kelmerdine has been pulling those other two cars at a good race as well. In fact, he turned the last lap at 49 seconds. That's well over 195 miles an hour. Kelmerdine is really coming up to that. Now, let's see if he has enough momentum to pass the one he caught. without anyone to draft with and several cars might go by. Mayfield up on the outside edge who's a lap down. He's he's going to get by. But I tell you one thing that helped Field to do this this time that he was not able to do it before was the fact that Shelmerdine had come up behind him and helped to push him a little bit and help him to make that pass. More on it, let's go to John Kern. Well, they've recalculated the fuel mileage down here in the 10 steel pit, taking into consideration the last run under caution. Grady Humphrey says they're going to go for it, guys. That's what they, we don't see caution between now and the race. They're going to try and stretch their fuel mileage. But the calculations show that they could be about a lap and a half to two laps short. So keep an eye on that 16 car. We'll watch it, John. It's 25 laps to go here on the 2.66 mile Talladega Super Speedway. Always exciting action here in Arkham or Winston Cup. Anytime they come to this high bank, can Tim Steele hang on to get Arkham win number one? Will Kurt Gilberty be the smaller and pick up his win? We'll ask this question in about 20 laps. If you can't wait, 
You need the news weekly of motoring, Auto Week. If you can't wait for driving impressions, get Auto Week. Auto Week drives them all and tells you about them first. If you can't wait for car news, get Auto Week. Auto Week covers it all. The great old cars, the auto show. Auto Week's columnists are controversial and fast. And if you can't wait for racing news, get the News Weekly of Motoring. Auto Week races to bring you the winningest coverage first. If you can't wait, get Auto Week, the News Weekly of Motoring, now. Call 1-800-828-4100 for a full year. 52 issues at the special TV price of $19.95. Just 38 cents an issue. Save $80 off the cover price. You've thought about it. Stop waiting. Do it now. Call 1-800-828-4100 for the new... For excitement on ESPN. Take a Sunday drive at Talladega Super Speedway. SP reaching 200 miles an hour. The Winston 500. Today at 2 Eastern Live on ESPN. Talladega Super Speedway and a beautiful panoramic shot of the Alabama countryside, courtesy of the Family Channel Blend, currently on its 1993 situation positive tour. And there's the Family Channel Blend, 132 feet in length, 44 feet in height, and 37 feet wide. We were under caution for this incident moments ago. A header pipe, and you don't want to pick those up, guys. They're about 180 degrees in their coolest spot. And, uh, they try to pick it up and put it on that Chevrolet safety truck. And while we're under caution, pit stop. Occurred to the lead two cars. Car number 16, Tim Steele coming down in his fourth Thunderbird. Grady Humphrey, the crew chief there. Mark Tudor about to service the car number two, the Hooters Ford. Top of your screen, Tim Steele. Bottom would be the car number two of Loy Allen Jr. Fuel only for Steele. His car exited quickly, and now Loy Allen's car getting in. They clean the front of the car, chassis adjustment in the rear of that machine. And they still clean the grill as Tim Steele comes down. And the stop sign there by the arc official stop Steele. As you watch Keselowski and Allen come down pit road. And the car number 98 stayed on the racetrack. That is Kirk Shelverdine as Mark Thompson has also stayed out the car number 66. And they are the lead to some. And Bob Keselowski, who is currently in third, he stayed out as well. Now the car number two of Loy Allen is shown in fourth place and Tim Steele in fifth. We're about ready to go race. Lap 100, just 17 laps away from the conclusion of the Poland Pro 500. Now we wonder, we understand there was some conversation in the pit between the crews of Jeff Purvis in the car number one, who's still a lap down, and Shelmerdine, maybe to get Purvis out front and help to pull him away from his nearest pursuer. And Shelmerdine needs to back off and get behind him. Hey, he's racing with him, but I believe that would be a good move if he could do that. Purpose being shown in the eighth position now, one lap down. But that would put Purpose back on the lead lap, and if the caution flag came out, he'd have to battle Purpose for the win. So certainly uh, Shelmerdine taking the option of trying to lead here and stay out front for these final 17 laps. There's Mark Thompson in the red car. He is shown in second position. Roy Allen Jr. down on the inside in the Hooters Ford is third. Trying to move back to the front. He's already moved around Bob Freeback. And looking out the rear window now, Jeff Purvis. He now slides beneath Kurt Shelbertine. And he will drag the car number two in his draft. That's Roy Allen Jr. and Tim Steele. So Allen takes the lead. Second spot, and that will put Kurt Shelberty back in the third position. Jerry, I believe it would have been a good move for Shelberty to have dropped in behind the one car of Purvis and tried to draft it because the one car has been fast all day long. He could maybe could have pulled him away, but now he's sitting back in third. You got to remember now that Purvis is on the lead lap. He has unlapped himself, so should the yellow flag come out for the seventh time, he would be able to come around and be in contention for the win. It's now Tim Steele will take the lead, sliding to the outside around Loy Allen. And Shelverdine will take the second position away from Loy Allen. So Steele now, the car number 16, on the move. Brady Humphrey had a gas and go pit stop. That's the crew chief a minute ago. And now the youngster from Michigan trying to pick up his first ever Arsenal win. 
And we've said several times, Jerry, that has been a fast race car, and that's an understatement because all day long that car has just been he's been able to pass the, the front running cars and been able to come from behind a couple of times. He is fast. And Ken Field has a look at the youngsters. Ken Field is just 24 years of age, Super Joe Michigan. Talk about a fast race car, the next one R, Delta Arena machine, car number one, has come from three laps down. They call it X1R horsepower in a bottle. It was given that name by the American Motorcycle Institute, and that's what the in-car camera is in right now. This car that's now on the lead lap with 15 laps to go has come from three laps down. The car number one of Jeff Purvis, and certainly, if he had to get a caution flag, he'd be a contender to win this thing. He's still get back in there, 15 laps to go, so he as fast as his car is, he can very definitely be. So right now, all he can do is sit there and ride and hope for a car to play. As Tim Steele is leading here, the laps are winding down at Talladega. The final lap for the Poland Pro 500 when we come back to Talladega Super Speedway. I started spinning around uh, when I was 20. But I had a few guys at the gym. I did mention one time that, geez, you know, we're spinning, we're losing our hair, and uh, they wish they had a nice head of hair like I have. And that really blew my mind. Having hair is the greatest. When I first put the replacement on, I felt prettier. I felt younger, which is important. And um, I still feel that way. I'm very happy I did it. New England Associates is New England's largest hair replacement company. We offer the latest techniques in hair replacement to give you back a natural, great-looking head of hair. I started losing my hair when I was about 24. I realized it was like one of the best things I had ever done because now I have so much more confidence. Call the toll-free number on your screen now and receive a free brochure from New England Associates. Call 1-800-453-5500. The quest to qualify for the greatest racing spectacle in the world, the Indianapolis 500. To become an IndyCar driver is to constantly search for more speed, with disappointment and disaster looming at every turn. The Indy Time Trial, Sunday, May 16th, live on ESPN. Talladega Super Speedway. Laps are winding down and the youngster from Cooperville, Michigan. Ken Steele in the red and white new look, car number 16, trying to pick up his first arc to win. There's the differential. The second and third place cars are the car number 98 of Kurt Shelmerdeen and the car number two of Loy Allen Jr. Jerry, curious question, people would like to pass Jeff Purvis and put him a lap down knowing if the caution should come out, he could get back in the thick of this thing realizes that Purvis is helping to pull him away from his nearest competitor, who is Kurt Shelmerdine right now. And uh, so I think that he's gambling. He knows that if he passes the, nine, the uh, number one car, as we see a pass about to happen here for second position, but if, if uh, Fields had passed the number one car, then he knows that the one car is going to try to pass him back. So they'll be racing up there just like these cars are right here. And uh, they would really hurt him. Waving behind him to the car number 29 of Bob Kessel up and says, come on, come on, we got a draft box. And he, he saw the car number two come beneath him and Shelburne out on the outside waving to Keselowski to come on, give me a push. Let's use the air and try to stay up here. But the car number two seems to be strong enough just running by himself. Now he's getting some help down on the inside. That's Dale McDowell in the car number 33 giving him an assist. Haven't seen much off Dale today, but he has run a good race. He is being shown as a lap down in 10th position. Here's the battle between the car number 98 and the car number 2 for 2nd position. Hooters Ford and the advantage memory Oldsmobile of Kirk Shelberty. It is only Kirk Shelberty's second ever Arca start, and now Bob Rebeck on the inside will use his car Slides way up in front of Kurt Shelmerdine to take the spot away, so Breedak will take the third spot. 
And boy, while all of that's going on, that side to side racing, Jerry, Tim Steele and Jeff Herbert have just driven away from them. So Tim Steele had to be looking up in his rear view mirror and said, Keep at it, boys. Keep racing back there. You're doing me a big favor. You see, they're completely out there by themselves with 10 laps to go. Here they go, and there's Tim Steele, the red and white uh, Ford Thunderbird. Former ASA Rookie of the Year, trying to improve on what was an impressive third place finish in Texas a few weeks ago. There have been only three events in 1993 in Archer competition. There have been three different winners. In fact, there has not been a repeat winner in Archer since last August of 1992. One of the most competitive series we told you at the top of the show. There were 15 different winners last year. Now looking for their fourth different winner in just four events in 1993. Still content to sit there and ride behind the Jeff Purvis car. I don't blame him. I think he's very smart in doing this. Because he's getting down with the number of laps now, even if the caution should come out there, it would be hard for Purvis to come in ninth position to come back up to the other cars and get to steal. So he doesn't mind so much now. He's the lap down. We mentioned this field came out of Michigan. He had 52 ASA series starts, the Midwestern Short Track Association, 11 top five finishes including a win at Salem back in 1990. As the second and third place car runs side by side, we'll take a quick break and come back with the exciting finish of the Polar Pro 500 from Caledonia. Why use Valvoline motor oil? It's the number one choice of Indy 500 chief mechanics. Daytona 500 chief mechanics. NHRA mechanics. Baja 1000 mechanics. For use in their race cars and in their own cars. Any more questions? People who know use Valvoline. The Suzuki GSX-Rs. First, they win more road races than any production motorcycle in history. Then, we put a license plate on them. The new liquid-cooled GSX-Rs, now available in 600, 750, and 1100 octane. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fram keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. The NHL is playing for Pete. Watch the Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN with a hot, delicious Domino's pizza. And oh yeah, Get a comfortable seat. The Stanley Cup playoffs continue in a living room near you on ESPN. Tim Steele trying to hold on for victory number one in his ARCA career at Talladega Super Speedway. What a way to get it. Here on the high bank of the world's fastest stock car facility. See a little tire mark on the side of that car. He's been in some close competition. Going by the 04 of Wayne Larson out of Ames, Iowa. Number one, who's now on the lead lap, having made up three laps after having smoke come from beneath a valve cover. 193.8 miles an hour last time by. Looking back now to second and third place car. Bob Bree back in second place. In third is the car number two of Roy Allen Jr. Kirk Schilmer done is in fourth place. That was spoken much about Bob Bree back. He's got an early this is a 10th year celebration. 10 years ago, right here, Breeback was seriously burned in an incident when he cut a right front tire, hit the wall of the car, rusted in the flames, and he had a serious injury here. He said, I want to come back and beat this racetrack. And what a run he's having today. This Cafiti Max sponsored for Thunderbirds. Cafiti is a Mack truck dealership. And of course, Breeback has a logging business and has nine Mack trucks. They use his logging business and also 
They have a Ford dealership up there. Tomahawk, Wisconsin. That's the sponsor here in Talladega. What a good job Prevac is doing for today. Getting the challenge right now from Roy Allen Jr., who's trying to move up on the outside, going into turn one. Allen has a run on him, and looks like he might be able to make the pass coming off of turn two. And here comes Shelverdine up on the outside following Allen. The three backs hanging tight in there. They touch as they go down the back stretch into turn three. taking the uh, the short line, but he doesn't have anyone helping to draft there, Jerry. That's got to be hurting him a little bit. The 1990 Series champion, Bob Breback, all alone. Now gets a little bit of a drafting aid on the car on the inside, but not what he would like as the faster line is up high. Roy Allen is pulled away in second spot. Shelmer Dean is third. As you look from high above, Talladega Super Speedway, courtesy of the Family Channel Airship. Watching him come off the 33 degree banking. Now slide this one with a Jeremy Mayfield car. Ooh, there's a couple of cars getting together. Mayfield and the car number 66, the Thompson. Did a good job of hanging on to those cars. Mark Thompson is a sixth-place car in the Phoenix Air Sponsor machine. Both those drivers doing a heck of a job to keep spinning and tagging the wall. Right behind him was Ken Allen. He had a ringside seat on that action as they had a little bit of fender tag at about 190 miles an hour. of the leaders back to another pack. They are in heavy traffic with four laps to go. Now, Purvis is getting the pull away. There's Bob Strait. Gets the two the target expediting car now being passed by Tim Steele. Steele now in heavy traffic up the back straightaway. Now, Jerry, we talked about Purvis having come from three laps down. Well, Tim Steele was a lap down at one time. He made a green flag pit stop and uh, then was called back in. Black flag came back in from going too fast on pit road, so that put him a lap down. But he got back to the caution one time in front of the leaders, and so that put him back in the lead lap. So he has had to find his way back. Looking back at our leader, Tim Steele, from the X1R metal conditioner in-car camera with just three laps to go.
Texas World Speedway and will get victory number one at Talladega. The youngster from Coopersville, Michigan. And Loy Allen will lead him in the second with Bob Reback third, Ken Allen fourth, and Mark Thompson in the fifth position. That's how they'll finish the Arca Poland Pro 500. And they've got to be celebrating up in Michigan, up in Grand Rapids, where the folks who are a part of the HS Dive Engineering Company owned by Harold Field, Tim's father, have been supporting this young man's racing career for a number of years, just 24 years of age. And he brings the window net down and puts a big salute to the fans. And here's the car number 98. Apparently, yeah, the one he made out of fuel. Yeah. Got a tire. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of smoke coming from. You can see the left front tire is flat on the car. He brings it across the start finish line and uh, turns and tries to head back towards the pit. And apparently, he may have cut a tire down, which would take part of that fender with it. As he heads back to pit, heads back to pit road. This happy youngster waves to this good crowd on Hannah Talladega Super Speedway. Holds up number one, victory number one, and well deserved for Tim Steele. More after this. We're here at McDonald's to tell you about. Breakfast economics? It's a great breakfast at a great price. It's a McDonald's thing. It saves you money. Pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty good. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. It's good, isn't it? It's great. Hey, is that what I think it is? Yeah, it's my new Wagner power painter. Well, can you edge with it? Yeah, you can edge like this or adjust it to control the paint up close. And when I'm done, I'm going to switch nozzles and stain my deck. Do a lot of other jobs I've been meaning to do. Well, does it clean up easy? Yeah, it's quicker than you think. Why am I painting this by hand? Good question. Get a Wagner. Fast. Easy. You're done. Yeah. Beautiful. It's kit. And it lasts. You know, working at AutoZone is more than looking up parts or ringing up sales. Most of all, it's, it's listening. Because my customers know more about their cars than I'll ever know. They know every rattle by heart. I mean, that car is their baby. So when they've got a problem they're going to fix for themselves, I'm going to do my best to help them get whatever they need, no matter what it takes. Because people like that, they don't deserve anything less than the best I can give them. It's crazy. They love it, but that's why they do it. They're the relentless men and women of sports doing what most people think is impossible. Max out. Premieres tomorrow on ESPN. The Poland Pro 500 from Talladega Super Speedway is history in Talladega, Alabama. And the youngster from Coopersville, Michigan is on his way to victory lane. Our speedwall coverage of this ARCA Hooters Cup Series event being brought to you by Valvoline. People who know, use Valvoline. By Suzuki. The Suzuki motorcycle dealer has the ride you've been waiting for and the financing to get it. And by Allied Signals Fram Filters. You can pay a little now or a lot later. Let's go down to Victory Lane where John Kernan is standing by with our winner. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Tim, great effort for you guys. You told me today you were going to win this thing, and you said the only thing you were wrong about, you didn't leave that first lap. Well, you know, my crew chief said that. You didn't hear me say that. No. I got to say, this is for my wife for her birthday. Um, we were traveling on the way down here, and it wasn't much of a birthday present for her, but this is it. Go out and celebrate with a nice dinner tonight. I'm sure you can afford that right now. Did it make it any sweeter, your first win, the way you had to come back from a lap down? Well, I was kicking myself in the butt there. I came in and I was going out. Grady, my crew chief got on the radio. says, oh, you got to stop and go. For what? And I kind of knew for what when I was at the pit road. I, you know, I screwed up, but just dug a little deeper and just kept digging all day. And it was HS die 
Thunderbird ran great all day. Well, you know, you say it ran great. It was fast on pit road and also on the racetrack, too, wouldn't you say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll keep it slowed down on pit road the next time. <laughs> all right, congratulations, Tim Steele. First big victory, Jerry. And John, he'll pick up the lion's share of $147,527 purse here today. Steele takes the win. Lloyd Allen, Bob Freeback, Kenny Allen, and Mark Thompson finishes in the top five. And six through tenth, Bob Keselowski, Bobby Bowser, Kirk Shelmerdine dropped back to eighth and having a problem on the last lap. Jeff Purvis came home ninth, and Jeremy Mayfield, the point leader, in tenth. And there were nine cars in the lead lap at the end. Dale McDowell gets an 11th place finish. Bill Venturini getting a pretty respectable finish there. Robert Hamm in 15th spot. Taking a look at your favorite driver where they finished. Bob Strait, his first ever start at Talladega, driving a Jim Spacuza car, gets a 19th place finish. See Tim Davis back there, Bill Flowers, Rick Hooser back uh, 21st through 25th. A lot of drivers had problems. There's Glenn Brewer finishing in the 26th position. Bob Dodder finishing 28th. One of the early problems, Gary Toodle had a power steering problem. He finishes back in 35th position. And one of the fastest cars, Paige Jones, had this problem over there crashing, but he was fast in the early part of the race. And Jeff McClure finishes in 40th spot. And we'll wrap up the Arca season, the very last event of the Arca series coming up on our championship weekend in Atlanta Motor Speedway. Arca 500 kilometer event live Friday at 2 p.m. Coming up in November. Then the next day, Saturday the 13th, the Slick 50 NASCAR Push Series event at 4 p.m. And of course, the Hooters 500 NASCAR Winston Cup Series event. It is championship weekend in Atlanta. And coming up next, right here at Talladega, Alabama, Talladega Super Speedway, can Davey Allison make it two in a row? He qualified in fifth position. The front row, Dale Earnhardt and Jimmy Spencer. Row two has Dale Jarrett and Rick Wilson. Once again, we congratulate the youngster from Cooperville, Michigan. Tim Steele led 49 of 117 laps in route to his first ever ARCA Series victory. For Benny Parsons and John Curtis and Ned Jarrett, I'm Jerry Parsons. Once again, congratulating Tim Steele and saying so long from Talladega. beyond the tri-oval right at the pit exit and that means at the finish you can take a run for that start finish line with a non-traditional line see Dale Earnhardt laying back trying to get a run on these fellows green is out green flag flies Steve Millen moves to the lead but keep an eye on Earnhardt he moves high in turn one Kenny Schrader trying to go by on the outside he and Earnhardt hooked up Schrader, Earnhardt, Martin now hooked up, running the high groove. Scott Pruitt comes forward a few positions and tucks in. It's still Millen in the front. Rusty Wallace comes to the inside on the backstretch. Three abreast throughout much of the field. And Wallace gets some help from Kinzer, and Wallace moves to the front. Here's Earnhardt's view as he starts to move up through this field. Boy, there you get a great view of the banking here at Talladega. Earnhardt losing positions up on the outside. There are three abreast right in front of them. Almost touched. Pruitt and Schrader right side by side there as they're three abreast all the way through the first turn. And Rusty Wallace will lead that lap. Pruitt is that sandwich there. He's in the pink car between the two bluish cars. Rusty Wallace hooking up with Steve Kenzer. Out in front, Ricky Rudd, that yellow car in third place. Look at him, three abreast once again, sandwiching Scott Pruitt. And there goes Mark Martin. He's going to try to make it four abreast. No, he backs off, wisely backs off. And Earnhardt now tucked in ahead of Pruitt and now starts his move for the front. Martin leading the championship, but as you can see, he's in that mustard-colored car, is now last in this race, so he's really got his work cut out for him. The key here again, scoring those bonus points. Wallace in front. Trying to pick up as many laps in the lead as he can, if not the overall win. Kinzer running really well again. Last year, if this race feels fast to you as you're watching it, 
Last year, he won at an average speed of 186 miles an hour. This is the view of what that speed looks like from Steve Kinzer's car. The nine car of Rusty Wallace just ahead. Down the back stretch. There's Ricky Rudd as he closes on Wallace and around Kinzer. Kinzer losing spots. Also Schrader. Schrader closing in. And he's